If you remember from, I think, the first tutorial, I explained that when you include a file, it takes all the information in that file and puts it in this file, and that this library includes information and functions for inputting and outputting information. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to get input from the user. In this tutorial, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to show you the completed program, and then we're going to go over the source code for the program, and we'll see how it worked. This program is just going to ask me for my first name, and I'm going to give it my first name, and then it will print out a welcome message. All right, so let's run the code. It asks me what my first name is, and if you've never used a terminal program like this, this blinking little line here means that it's waiting for me to type information on the keyboard. And so I'm going to type my name, Sheldon. And when you're ready to give it this information, all you have to do is hit enter on your keyboard. And as soon as I hit enter, it printed out, welcome Sheldon. So a pretty simple program. And here we can see the code for it. The first line was printed out, what is your first name? The next line of code that we have is the variable that's going to store the first name. And because most first names aren't all that long, I've limited it to 32 characters maximum. And because I've limited the name to being 32 characters, I have a loop that's going to get a single character at a time, and it's only going to loop 31 times maximum, because if we loop any more, we will end up inputting more characters we've reserved in memory, and that will cause a problem in our program. Most likely it will crash. And the reason I use 31 is because when we're reading in characters, we don't want the user to have to input the null terminator character himself. So we're going to input that character as the last element in our first name array. We're going to do that ourselves so that the user doesn't have to. Okay, so this line here ha is creating a character variable, and it's calling the get C function, which stands for get character. And this here is getting the character from standard input. And that's just the terminal window where we type the characters. This line it's a little bit confusing, but all this is a function that gets a character from the terminal. Then we have to test to see if that character is equal to the new line character. When we hit enter, the character that it gives the program is the new line character. So if we see the new line character, we know the user hit enter and that they were ready to submit their information. So if we see this, we break. And now we already saw what break did with the switch statements. It just exited out of the entire switch statement and began executing code after it. In loops, both for loops and while loops, the break statement ends the loop and starts writing the code after it, which is this line of code here. If the character is not a new line, it's going to take the current position, which is i, which starts at 0 and goes to 31, and it's going to assign the character value to that position in the first name. So the first time it's going to put it in the first position and so on and so on until we get to the new line character which means the user finished typing his name and then we break out of this for loop and we run this line of code here. Now whatever i is pointing at now it's the next character waiting for a value and because the user has finished inputting information we are going to put the null terminator character character whose value is zero there so that we can use this string because as we learned and if a string doesn't have a null terminator character it cannot really be used by the C programming language and our final line of code just prints out welcome and then this array of characters this string which we just added all the characters in the user's name to one at a time and if you want to see it one more time in action let's go back to the terminal and run this one more time and it works. 
So in this tutorial, we learned the basics of getting information from users. We had to get this information one character at a time. We had to decide how many characters we were going to get from the user. And when the user submitted the information, we got the new line character backslash n. And when we saw that we broke out of the loop, we had to remember to use the null tamp terminator at the end of the string so that we could print out the string. And that's about it. I hope you've learned something in this tutorial, and I will see you again next time.